Hey everyone, welcome back to this Tosca automation playlist and we are still talking about our top 10 Tosca best practices. Now we have already discussed about three best practices and I'm going to talk about the fourth best practice in this complete list. Now if you have not watched the previous best practices, again you know the drill, go back and watch all the three best practices and make sure you have implemented them before continuing with this particular video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on all the upcoming videos on this particular topic. So now, let's talk about this particular best practice. It's a very common best practice which is followed in test automation no matter which tool you use or which framework you use. Okay, so it basically talks about not using any static weights in your automated test cases and the reason is very simple when you use static weights then your test cases are going to take more time to execute because static weights are wait times which are constant which means the system or the tool is going to wait for that amount of time no matter what is the state of the application or uh, what you intended to get from the application is already present, right? So maybe you don't need to wait for that amount of time. But since you are using a static weight, the system will always wait for that amount of time before proceeding to the next step in your test case. And that's the biggest disadvantage because if you keep on adding the static weights in your test cases, then your overall execution time for that particular test case will increase by a lot of time okay so instead of this you should always be using a dynamic weight mechanism which can basically synchronize your application with your automation tool and that is the same thing which is applied in tosca so there are a number of ways to do this but generally when you want to synchronize your application uh, with tosca and you want to apply some weight uh, mechanism then you should be using the wait on method now it is uh, one of the action modes okay and we'll see how it is done but this is the method which you should use because it is dynamic in nature so it will wait um, until a specified amount of time okay which is specified in the test case or in the settings and then uh, it will wait until that maximum time but the difference between static weight and the wait on method is that uh, when you use wait on method then it will only wait for the time until that particular condition which you have specified is met so once that condition is met it will go ahead and uh, it will execute the next step no matter uh, even if it has not reached or not waited the amount of time it should wait for that maximum period right so you can see the difference uh, one is dynamic in nature one is static in nature okay and for static weight we use the t-box weight method okay so we'll see both the methods uh, with an example okay and for this example i'm going to use one of the obstacle uh, pages okay here you can see uh, this in this obstacle you need to click on the button calculate automatically after some time the send button will be visible or enabled so right now it is disabled and i cannot click on this but if i click on calculate and then uh, it is going to take this progress bar till 100 uh, percent so you need to wait for this progress bar to complete 100 percent and then only the send button will be enabled and then i can click on this to complete this obstacle right so that's the job you need to do but uh, there are two ways of doing this okay so one is the inefficient way where you can use a t-box wait method to wait for this amount of time and also you need to calculate how much time it is taking to reach 100 percent right so it may be 20 seconds 30 seconds and similarly you have to wait it in your you need to put a wait time in your test case okay after which this will be enabled and then you can click on it so this is the inefficient way of um, uh, automating this particular scenario. The efficient way is to click on calculate and then put a wait on action method on this send button. So, okay, so it will wait 
till the send button is enabled no matter how much time it takes okay and once it is enabled then we click on this so this is the efficient way of automating the scenario with tosca okay now let's see uh, this in action okay so i have already um, created two obstacle test cases for this particular scenario okay and uh, it is the same scenario okay but the way i'm doing it is little different so if you look at the first way it is using the t-box weight uh, method here the duration i've specified it as 20 seconds i don't really know exactly how much time it takes but um, i have put a certain time so that it will wait for 20 seconds okay after clicking on calculate and then it will click on the send button okay the second method is um, doing the same but it doesn't have the t-box weight a step okay so one less step also if you see in this particular step it clicks on calculate and then it is using the action mode wait on to wait till this particular condition is satisfied in the value which is enabled equals equals true okay and then it will click on calculate so you can see the difference here there is one uh, step lesser okay also it is more efficient because i don't need to calculate the time it has to wait and uh, in real time applications okay the wait time could be anything it could depend on your network bandwidth or it could depend on various other reasons so it is practically impossible to uh, actually calculate a particular time uh, you should wait for a particular control to appear or enable also you should not be doing that you should be making your test cases more dynamic in nature so that it can handle this kind of scenarios if they appear during the execution where uh, you don't have any control over your test cases okay so um, if i go ahead and uh, run this you will see the difference okay so let me run it the first time where we are using a static weight and it is going to wait till uh, 20 seconds after it clicks on the calculate button okay so here it is clicking on the calculate button and then uh, it is waiting for 20 seconds no matter if the progress is complete still it is going to wait for that amount of time you can see here it is still not clicking on the send button because maybe my wait time is more than um, what it should be okay and sometimes you will not even get the desired result as you can see here now uh, this particular page has gone back to its original state so it didn't even click the send button okay so i need to adjust my time wait time to basically sync with this particular um, functionality okay which is very difficult and which is not recommended now let's try and run the second test case okay and let's see the difference and this time around you will see that even if i am not using any wait time it is able to progress uh, and it is able to click on the send button okay because it is dynamic it can wait until uh, the amount of time uh, till that send button is not enabled okay and as soon as it is enabled it is going to click on it it's not going to wait any longer okay so you can see here the send button got enabled and then um, i was able to click on it so you can see the difference um, one is more efficient and gives you better results you would be sure that using a dynamic weight you are actually performing the right kind of action which your automated test case is supposed to do but uh, in static weight it might pass sometimes it might fail uh, many times okay so you know the difference but this is the best practice which is recommended by Tracentis. So to conclude, uh, you should only be using static weight as a last resort. So if nothing else works, then only go ahead and use static weight, but this should be the minimum in your test cases, okay? Uh, always try to use the dynamic weight mechanisms. One way is the weight on method, and there could be several other ways uh, in Tosca through which you can uh, implement this dynamic weight, okay? So that's all for this particular video um, and uh, talking about the best practices. Uh, hope you like it and you enjoyed it. We have lots more videos coming up. So keep watching and keep learning.